So this, I scammed this implant. So, so he couldn't scam me. I'm scamming so a scammer so. today, but I won't know if my plan works until the end of this video. Because as I'm recording it, my plan hasn't really come together yet. So we'll find out what happens. Huh. But win or lose, the point of this video is to tackle one of my biggest pet peeves, which is peeves. scammers calling out other scammers to make themselves look good. I guess the logic is, oh, I can't scam you. I call out scams. And what kills like me is him. that it actually works. People fall for this all the time and it drives me crazy. So today I want to flip the script on one of these people and attempt to have a scammer call themselves. It's anything. like Inception, but for conmen. We could call it conception. Dylan Dennis is an MMA fighter famous for two things, cage fighting MMA. and not fighting KSI. But on December 23rd, he decided to be famous for a third thing, calling out the scammers. He writes in a tweet, damn, Logan Paul is a scumbag. Feel bad for everyone okay. he scammed. Now, of course, no one's gonna really disagree with this, so the yeah, likes yeah. rolled in. But what Dylan doesn't tell you is he also has a history of scamming people on Twitter. And what Dylan didn't know is that there was a detective watching him. That detective was not me, actually. I wish it was me. It was my buddy, Zach XBT on Twitter, who said, damn, Dylan Dennis is a scumbag. Feel bad for everyone he scammed. And then Zach showed some tweets of Dylan promoting obvious scams, which then rug pulled. Now, I was gonna kind of leave it there, a little nice Twitter dunk, but it got me thinking. You know, deleted scam tweets are the internet equivalent of roaches in your house. In both cases, if you see more than oh, one of them, there's a lot more you don't see. So I reached back out to Zach and I said, hey, good tweet, but I want to find out how many scams exactly this guy has promoted. So Zach started digging through the garbage bin of deleted tweets and we found out pretty quick there were a lot more, but I realized it was going to take Zach some time to get the results we needed. So we're going to go back to him at the end of this video. But right now I had a bigger problem, which is that to show this full scheme, I needed not only the number of scam tweets, I also needed to know how much he got paid for all this stuff. Uh, for the scams he promoted. So even after looking through the blockchain, I couldn't find any, anything. So I needed a social engineering approach to figure out how much he got paid. I wanted to trick Dylan into giving me the amount. The rough idea was to approach Dylan and say, hey, I created this dumb NFT project that's completely fake. How much would it cost for you to promote it? He gives me an answer and I have my price. But of course, I realized he actually knows who I am because he's tweeting okay. about my Crypto Zoo series. So I can't Obviously. contact him directly about this. I needed kind of someone who could reach out on my behalf, who like looked like he would be serious about selling you an NFT collection. And that's when I thought of my buddy, Oompaville. This is a guy who's actually oh, really yeah. sweet in real life, but his particular profile on Twitter says NFT salesman 100%. So I contacted him to contact Dylan on my behalf. And I told him to say, hi, Dylan, I'm launching a crypto NFT platform called sour.gg and was wondering what your rate is for an Instagram story post or Twitter post for promotion. We can provide all the marketing copy. Please let me know as we're trying to launch relatively soon. Now, I guess as we wait for him to respond, let me explain that sour.gg, that website is not a real crypto NFT platform. Nothing in this video is a crypto or real NFT. So you cannot buy crypto from this. I want to be super clear as we talk about this. Not only that, the actual website we sent them to is just a landing page for one of Oompa's candy businesses, but it kind of looks a little NFT like they're like, there's like this little purple monkey thing in the corner. And so I thought it would fool Dylan. And I was actually right because Dylan immediately responds with want to do a tweet. And then I love this next part. What is it? I like the order of that, you know, like, let's promote it. And then underneath it, what am I promoting? Uh, and it's at this point I realized that this is not only my chance to find out how much Dylan gets paid for all these scam promotions. It's also my chance to test Dylan Dennis. He says Logan Paul is so bad. He feels so bad for the victims. But let's see if he's so different. So I decided that this fake NFT project I would be pitching him was going to be just like CryptoZoo. In fact, to do this, I basically copied almost word for word CryptoZoo's white paper saying the following. Sour.gg may appear to solely function as an NFT collection, but it's much, much more. Sour allows users to earn sweet tokens that are openly traded via a yield that is based on the rarity of a given candy NFT. But just in case you didn't think it was obvious enough, I decided to leave Dylan one last hint. 
I signed off with a nonsense statement saying, quote, come obtain fun friends, enter exciting zones, indescribably lush, look out adventurer. Now this is a sentence which means nothing unless you lay it out by the first letter of every word. And then it spells coffeezilla. Okay. So uh, don't say I didn't warn him. And obviously, even if I hadn't warned him, Dylan Dennis surely wouldn't promote a crypto zoo project, right? Because he's, you know, he feels too bad for the victims. He wouldn't promote something nearly identical. Oh, right. wait, he said, Did sounds he? dope. And then ETH, question mark? And at this point, I'm just a little surprised by how easy this all is. Zero due diligence huh. is being done here. We have created the weakest facade possible for an NFT scam, and he's just immediately Killing on him. board. Of course, uh, for a price. I mean, that is the one thing he actually did care about, which might not surprise you. And it's the one thing he actually pushed back on because I told him I wanted to pay him $1,000. And he said, that's pretty low for me. So we negotiated and landed on a payment rate of $5,000 for a 24 hour post about our NFT project, which does not exist. After we settled on that, he sent me payment information, which really established a lot for us. We got answers to most of our questions. First, how much he gets paid per post. And we also got an Ethereum address from Dylan, which I hoped was going to link He's to all his other Ethereum. payments, but I didn't give him enough credit here. Dylan gave us a brand new crypto wallet just for this transaction, which seems to imply that he probably makes new wallets for every new deal he does, which is pretty shrewd. And at this point, I realized I had a choice to make. I could take what I learned, present it to you guys, and stop this little charade I had with Dylan and make my video. And Dylan would just keep doing this because his fans wouldn't know. Or I could try to teach him and his fans a lesson in a bit of a different way, which is actually pay Dylan to post a link to our fake NFT project. But the twist would be as soon as he posts that link, it will become a website dedicated to every scam tweet Dylan Dennis has ever done. And remember that this website would be linked by Dylan Dennis himself to all of his fans, directly showing them proof that he'd scammed them multiple times. And we'll figure out how many times again in just a second, but I first wanna say, I thought about this a while because this plan has its own risks. I mean, the number one risk is that Dylan just doesn't post and steals my money. And then the number two risk is, well, what if he finds out we duped him and then immediately deletes everything? We don't get our money's worth. So to remedy that, because I really wanted to do this plan, was to structure the payment so that I paid him $1,000 up front, but didn't pay him the rest until he kept the tweet for certain periods of time. And to my surprise, he agreed to the terms. And so this is where I'm going to leave things with him. At this point, I have a lot of things to do before Friday, which is the day I told him this whole fake thing is launching. So I'm gonna go do that and go get prepared for Friday. I will see you guys then. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you slept well. Uh, I didn't sleep much at all. We're working really hard to get this whole thing figured out. So I'm just in the apartment right here and uh, we're gonna just get ready together here. Uh, Cause I got a lot to tell you guys and we don't have time at the studio to get it all done. So I gotta prepare you here. Let me just set the stage for you though, for what's happened since I last recorded. Number one, we created soursnft.com, which is a our actual fake landing page for the NFT project. It's got all these cute Candyland uh, fake NFTs that don't exist. Now, the idea is this is what he's initially going to promote. And then I also created our little uh, switcheroo website, which is just a website with all his uh, previous transgressions. Now, I did talk to some people who were a bit concerned that maybe I hadn't fully been transparent with Dylan that maybe I should be more transparent with Dylan about what's going on so he doesn't say I, I trapped him in this whole thing. So what I decided to do just to make sure we cover our bases here is I drew up a contract for Dylan to sign before this whole thing goes live. I'm gonna be sending it to him. And in it, I lay the whole thing out. And this is what I meant by headwinds. This is where he probably will catch us because in black and white, I lay out our whole scheme right in front of him. So it literally says like, you're gonna be the butt of the joke. It says people aren't doing due diligence. It says that we're gonna be switching the website to show his prior promotions. So we lay out the whole thing there and what we're really banking on is he's not gonna read any of this. He's just gonna see money and just sign it, which is the whole point of this entire thing. So I think it fits. 
Uh, hopefully we don't end up sabotaging our own project by double checking, you know, covering our bases here. But either way, that's what's going on. Also, Zach XBT finished finding all the scams of this guy. So we're going to go back to the studio and check those out. Okay, I see you. All right, I'm back. And we have the results from Zach XBT. He found over 20 projects that Dylan promoted and then tried deleting yeah. where many of them were rug pulls and scams. It was at this point he just gave up looking for more because there were so many. So we added those to the website, but I'm sure many of you are also curious about what's going on with Dylan Danis. So we're going to go check back in with our liaison Oompa because at this point, the whole thing is set up and it's all just resting on whether he does any due diligence or not. Let's see what happens. Tell us where we're at with Dylan. So he seems to have taken the bait. There's one final step. Obviously, we have to get him to uh, to make the tweet. You just sent ten dollars to him, right? Just to yeah. Uh, I wanted to bait, bait him so that we can send the contract, and he's gonna be like waiting for the money. What now? I mean, is, is he responding? He said sounds good, and then shortly after he said got it to saying that he he got the ten dollars we sent as a test for the for his transaction. Now comes the actual moment of truth. We're about to send the contract. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my gosh. Sending it. All right. And then I'm sending the drive link. I mean, we've sent the contract now. We're just waiting. We're literally waiting. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree, bro. I agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a f idiot. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, he agreed. And you might notice that we weren't actually able to use DocuSign and get his signature because it was experiencing outages at the moment, the actual website, but we were able to just have him do a written agreement in DMs that he agreed to our terms. And although it was very shocking that he actually did it, I have to be honest, it was here that the pressure really ramped up because at this point, I paid Dylan $1,000 and now we're just waiting for him to post. And I'm really worried that what if he reads the document in that time and realizes what's going on? But that's when Dylan gave us a lucky break, but also gave us a few curveballs. Okay, big news, boys. A little update ahead of schedule. I, by the way, my heart, like, I cannot take this. I was already telling Upa, I was like, we have to just go forward with this because I'm not ready. I cannot take all the suspense. And Dylan texted us, hey, should I just go ahead and tweet? So we're just going to say yes. Go ahead and tweet. Just refreshing yes. now, I guess. See what he says. There's been so much work that goes into this. You guys didn't see this off camera. Dylan starts talking about where's your community? So we have to whip up this community from nowhere. Our community doesn't exist. We had to create a Twitter profile. We had to buy a bunch of botted followers. An hour ago, it didn't exist. I don't think I've ever been so excited about something in my life. Please, dude. Oh, Come on, Dylan. It. He tweeted it. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe he did it. He actually did it. He just tweeted it. What an oh. idiot. What? He, I can't believe it. What can I say? He promoted a tweet which literally spells out in first letters the word scam. I hope this has been highly educational for you guys that most of these influencers do zero work vetting these projects, contracts, and NFTs. If you enjoyed our work, video, it doesn't even read, huh? it is read the document a little bit. Oh, this is just lost one key or something. Uh, it's in the last part. Yeah, I'm going to do it for now.